Hey everybody, it's Frozen with Outdoor Adventures and thanks for joining me. I got a lot of stuff I want to cover today, so let's just get right into it. First up, next Tuesday, March 6th at 8 p.m. Eastern, I want to do another live Q&A. Let's talk about backpacking, hiking, camping, maybe you have some trips coming up or some new gear that you're going to be trying out this year. Let's just talk about it. Now, if you can't make the live stream on Tuesday, no big deal. You can still watch it later after the video is published and you can even ask questions in the comment box below in this video and I'll be sure to get to them on Tuesday during the live chat. Next up, I want to talk about some new gear, some little tweaks that I made this year that I'm really excited about. What happened to the Wildcats? Well, there is a serious contender to the Wildcats. Everybody's been talking about these Lone Peak 3.5s from Altra, so I figured I'd try them out and Wow, I got to try these on a 20 mile hike of Raccoon Creek State Park, which is a local park near me, about 20 minutes away from my house. And I'll tell you what, these are amazing. I especially love the wide toe box on these. Now on the La Sportiva Wildcats, I was having some issues after very high mileage days in a row, a series in a row, that my little toe would start popping out of the mesh and I would act eventually develop a hole right around where that little toe is. It was extremely evident on the Superior Hike Control when we were out there for 14 days. So I decided to see what all the hype was about. I absolutely love these shoes so far. Now I know they've only been on one 20 mile hike, but I've been using them every day for about three weeks now. You know, just walking around, going to work, coming home. These have been on me for about three weeks. So the great thing about this is I have no IT band issues with these. Now, if you've been watching the channel for very long, you know I have IT band issues like crazy and I attribute not having the issues in this shoe due to the zero drop perhaps. I'm not sure, I'm gonna give it another couple hikes to try it out. If you're not familiar with what a zero drop is, they're pretty much exclusive to Altra. I think a couple other brands have started to do this. But having a zero drop just simply means that it's the same distance between your toe in the ground and your heel in the ground. Now normally on other shoes you would have you know, 15 millimeters or something on a little incline sloping downward. So your foot would actually ride like this. So your heel would be up just a little higher. And that was to, you know, help you walk in a shoe. But I'm liking the zero drop in here. Plus, another bonus, they have a little piece of Velcro on here. They call it a gator trap for my Dirty Girl Gators. So that's a little bonus. Next up, I got a pillow. So as you know, I've been using the z -Packs pillow dry bag, a medium version. And it's been working out great. However, I do notice at some points during the night, I just have to shift this around because it's either coming out the side or it's just not fluffy enough for me. So I figured I would drop this, get a regular clothes bag and try out this pillow. Now I was looking at the Exped Ultralight, which comes in at a surprising 1.8 ounces, including the little stuff sack they give you. But I was up at REI the other day and I saw this. This is an ultralight version of the Sea to Summit Eros. It's actually called the Eros Ultralight. So a little bit less fuzzy, but it seems to be pretty freaking good for at least me sleeping in a hammock. Now I got to try this for a couple nights just you know, kind of messing around with it. It's very, very comfortable. And it was advertised as a weight of 2.1 ounces. Surprisingly, when I got home, it actually weighs the same, maybe 0.05 ounces, a couple more grams more than the Exped Ultralight Pillow. So this comes in at 1.85 ounces with the stuff sack. So that's pretty crazy. So another feature that I like is you can make fine tune adjustments right here. So you just pop your finger in there or you can just deflate it really fast and pack it away. So. Looking forward to trying this. I think it's gonna be really good. For me, getting a good night's sleep is gonna be worth the extra weight than using something like the Z-Pax Pillow Dry Bag. Not knocking it, it's very, very well designed, but I, I like the peace of mind of just possibly getting better sleep with this. I know I just did my review on the Petzl Actic Core, but another headlamp caught my eye with very, very similar features. We're talking about the Night Core NU20. So this is a very, very minimalist headlamp, and it's probably not gonna be for everyone. Normally you'd get 
you know, a headband like this. This is actually on the Nightcore. I went to Lightsmith and actually purchased a mod. Now you can make these yourself out of shock cord. It's no big deal, but I kind of wanted to see how they did it. So this is just shock cord attached to the headlamp in the back. And surprisingly, it is super, super comfortable. I actually accidentally wore this around my house for about two hours. I meant to only put it on for an hour, but then I forgot it was on my head, so it stayed on there for two hours. The max output for this thing is 360 lumens, which is 10 lumens brighter than the Petzl Actic Core. Not only that, it is rechargeable, it is waterproof, and really the only thing it doesn't have on here is the red light feature. Now, if you're looking for a red light feature, the NU25 has that built into it. For me, I always forget to turn the red light feature on, so it usually just stays in the white light. There's this little thin piece of plastic on the mounting bracket for the headlamp that actually covers up the power button. So no matter where this thing is in my pack, I don't have to worry about the light turning on. The run times are pretty similar. Now, I know what you're probably saying to yourself. So if it's pretty much the same features as the Petzl Acta Core, which you said you like so much, what is the point of getting it? This thing weighs only 1.15 ounces with the headband mod. That's insane. Plus, it takes up considerably less volume in my pack. As long as it holds up, uh, you know, the same brightness and, you know, charges micro USB. So going to try it out. I'm really liking the headband though. I thought it might be a bit uncomfortable, but it's amazing and you can angle it as you see fit. So lastly, I want to talk about Gary Watch 2018. I talked to Gary last night. He stayed at Neil's Gap Shelter. So he's about 40 miles into his Appalachian Trail through hike. That is including the approach trail, which is about 8.8 .8 miles. So he's doing great. He said he has three days of video. He's just having a hard time finding 4G. So he's either gonna stay in a hostel or a hotel, upload it over Wi-Fi, or as soon as he has 4G, be expecting his video. Now, if you'd like to follow Gary, you can follow him on Instagram. He is hike the hike, or like I said, his YouTube channel, Gary on the AT. Anyway, I'm really looking forward to next Tuesday at 8 p.m. Eastern, March 6th. I hope to see everybody there. I'm really excited. I just really love doing the live QAs because it, it gives me two-way communication instead of one-way communication through the video. So look forward to seeing everyone there. Like I said, if you can't make it, no problem. It'll be published a couple hours after the stream ends and you can always ask your comments and questions below. So guys, I'm Frozen with Outdoor Adventures. Thanks for joining me today and I'll see you on the trail.